Hey, what's going on, guys? It's John. I'm back here. So today I wanted to go over a company that I've actually just added to the portfolio, and it's actually undervalued by you know, 30% or so. I wouldn't say it's necessarily undervalued by 30%. I should take that back. But it's down from its all-time high, probably 30%. You know, street math anyways, really quick, just looking at it. Um, and anyways, I just wanted to bring it to you guys' attention because I, I did a lot of research into it and I actually liked what I saw. And so I added it and I'm going to add it as um, on my greater buy list. So it's up there with Hershey, Starbucks and Archer Daniels Midland, which I've covered all of those and, um, and a few others as well that I'm buying a little more than just the normal amount in the portfolio currently because they're on sale in my humble opinion. So let's kind of cover a little bit about them. Because this is probably, you probably never heard of them. Honestly, I hadn't heard of them until I heard of them. Um, so anyways, it's Lamb Weston. And they've been around for like 60 years. But they've only been trading publicly for like the last six years. And so anyways, they actually have one of the largest customers of theirs, believe it or not. I should say it makes up like 15% of their business is McDonald's, believe it or not. And they have owner, I mean, they sell... Basically, everything potato-wise, fries, sweet potatoes, normal fries. I mean, goodness, this company makes everything out of the sun. I mean, take a look. Like, I can po not possibly scroll through all the products they make. It's insane. So, anyways, they make, and this is this is just literally a page. You see here, products, 132. And it, it's, honestly, it's, it's even more. Like, if you go through all, everything. Um. Uh, but anyways, so it's pretty pretty daunting, really, just exactly what they make. They make a lot of stuff. Uh, but anyways, um, McDonald's. So they supply all their fries from McDonald's. You know, that, that they also do too, though. If we take a look here, some images as well, just to get an idea. They supply a lot of of the, basically the potatoes, fries, et cetera, for all of these major food chain, like retail or fast food joints majority quite a few and you know obviously those are not going anywhere tim soon and if you ask me if mcdonald's it's in the portfolio as well and it's not going anywhere so these are all defensive type positions is what i'm getting at and same with owning lamb weston so you know what the gold gold people did when it was the gold rush right the people that got rich were the ones that bought the shovels believe it or not because they had a lot more guaranteed income stream <laughs> It wasn't the people that were finding gold because a lot of times most of them didn't. It was the people that sold the shovels to all of them. Well, think of Lamb Weston as the uh, shovel seller. It supplies the fries, but it just so happens the business it supplies to are not just run of the mill, you know, get gold once and go out of business. No, it's like you're talking like world class businesses, McDonald's, for example. And um, among also selling their product line just in retailer you know, stores as well. So that's kind of them in a nutshell. They've had really good compelling growth. They're in over a hundred different company, uh, countries, excuse me, that they sell their products right even here. It says right here, their fact sheet. And actually I said 60 years, actually over 70 years, believe it or not. I don't know where I was thinking 60. I saw that maybe somewhere else. Um, so 80 million portions of fries sold every day worldwide. And I actually spoke with somebody, believe it or not, that I met at the gym today. And it was so funny because the guy actually helped design. He's like an engineering type of mindset. Uh, very successful in his years. He's pretty much retired now. Older gentleman. Really, really nice. Really cool. Really interesting. Actually, all the different stocks he held. I was surprised. Like, just talking to him is kind of fun. But he actually helped design one of their fry machines. And it makes an, an ungodly amount of fries per day. Like, at that factory, it makes what's the number he said it was mind-boggling it was like i don't even know i think it's like 1.6 million i don't know if it's potatoes or if it's pounds or what it is but per day this machine goes through and processes that many and i don't know if that's the culmination of all the plants i didn't get into it that much but it's an insane amount so anyways very large company very successful company and, um, you know, it, it produces a product that's not going anywhere anytime soon. It probably never will. 
fries are always, I mean, in demand. People love their fries. People love their potato products, and they do it very well. So that's them in a nutshell. Like I said, I kind of cover largest customer, multiple other customers. Okay. I've covered the fact sheet a little bit here. All their product line. Now let's get into the fun part too. I want to talk about some of the financials behind them. So as you can tell here, their all-time high is $115. And currently they're trading at $86.77. So let's do some non-street math, shall we? So let's just find out how much of a true uh, discount that they're actually trading on is compared to their, you know, their high, so to speak. So it's like, basically, you know, I take the, the low number divided by the high and what I'm getting is 0.75 and change. So essentially that equates to about 25% off of their all time high. And uh, that's not bad. That's a pretty good deal. And I was talking to this gentleman and he knew exactly the company I was talking about. Cause I was like, yeah, you ever tried out, checked out Lamb Weston? It's a good, I know you like defensive plays cause he had like general dynamics, Lockheed Martin, all these different companies. And, <clears throat> and I was, and he, he immediately was like, yeah, I remember when it was like $50 a share. So he's looking back to COVID probably. Right. And then even after when it dropped down into here in the 21, 22 range years, but anyways, it's still a good buy. And actually, here's something pretty impressive to keep in mind. This has only been public since, you know, showing back to 2016. So not very far. And that over that time, it's had almost 160% return just on share price alone. This doesn't adjust for dividends reinvested or anything. And uh, I had to stretch my neck there. So that's really stellar, really. I mean, if you take that math, simple math says, okay, that's 2016 to 2024 six not even six whole years and that's 160 percent basically and that's even with it dropping so i mean that's uh that's pretty impressive i mean that's 20 almost 20 26 and and, and two-thirds of a percent year over year average over that time pretty pretty impressive do i think that's going to continue no but i think that they could have high single to double digit growth for sure and if you look here, let's look at the dividend, okay? So ever since they started back in 2017, they've been paying a steady growing dividend. So just take a look at all the all the raises that they've had. So right here. So they've had their one year, they had a raise of almost over 28.5%. Huge, huge. Three year is, you know, 15 and just over 15 and a quarter of a percent growth. Their five year which is probably more accurate long term is 12 almost 12 and a half percent year over year growth on the dividend as a lower starting yield of a 1.66 but with that phenomenal growth that's pretty good and their payout ratio right now is super amazing very impressive it's not even 14 and a half percent it's rated as safe as well and we can go back and see all the dividends paid so like when they first started out here 2017 paying a dividend and it was just over 18 in three quarters of a of, of cents and if we go to present day we're at you know 36 cents simple math tells us that's double basically since they started paying out in six years so that's pretty dang pretty darn good really um and then we see out the payout history right here as well so as you can tell it's just growing at a good trending upward take a look at the dividend yield from an all-time high perspective to kind of see, I like to look at the yield and see where it's at from an all-time high. So it's not the highest it's been, because obviously that was when it was at a low. So like over in this time period, this time period, this time period. But we're getting closer up to that time period, I guess is what I'm saying. And some other things that I would like to look at are going to be on the financials and we're going to look at the stats here and we're going to see the price to earnings ratio. I always like to look at that historically speaking. It gives me an idea to see based off of historical relevance of this company over the last decade approximately. Are they trading at a lower PE price to earnings ratio historically or not? It's a quick metric because I know based off of certain sectors what it should trade at. And um, 
And then I just look at the individual company itself and I see, okay, well, are they richly trading on a high PE? Well, that could be a sign that they're overvalued because the PE is basically how many years in the future that you're paying for, for them to get a full return on your money, if you think of it in simple terms. So uh, currently the PE for the last trailing 12 months has been just over 11 and a half. And let's look back historically, okay? Back to 2017, all the way to 2023, it has been greater than that by a substantial amount. So, I mean, that's that's pretty good, really. If you think about it, we're on a historical low PE basis, actually the lowest, which is pretty phenomenal. Their payout ratio as well, for whatever reason, 2017 was skewed, I think. So if we basically take that out of the equation for payout ratio, you know, averages, we're in the 20s to teens to 30s and 67. I'd say if we average that without even pulling out a calculator, we would probably get somewhere around that 67 is an outlier. So it's, it's going to pump it higher and we're just going to get rid of that 2017 number because I think that is, looks to be skewed to me. Um, you know, we're probably sitting at an average long-term PE realistically of 25 to 30%, maybe, maybe 35, 35, 40, but no more than 40%, uh, even with that skewed up number in, in uh, 2022. So that's a really good PE because at 40%, even max is like long-term average. They have plenty of room to grow that, especially with their revenue per share. Looking back at 2014, you know, it was 19 and look at the last trailing 12 months, it's been 45. And I mean, I mean, that's good. That's super good. That's more than double. So also something else to look at. I always like to look at what is their uh, debt to equity. And I also like to see what their debt coverage is as well. So debt to equity here. So that's basically saying how much debt did this company have versus how to to the equity percentage. So it just so happens that we're in a environment where interest rates are higher. So I don't like to see a super high debt to equity. We can see here that it actually was negative and lower in prior earlier years. And then it crept up quite a bit. And from, you know, during the COVID time all the way out. But then you see here, they've actually been able to lower it over the past couple of years here. So that's a good sign. I like to see the fact that, um, that it is trending back down because we are at a higher interest, so it costs more for money. So I like to see that. And I also like to see what is their debt coverage to their service ratio as well. So basically saying, okay, well, how many more times, how many times over can they service their debt? And, you know, off of this ratio, it doesn't look to be, I mean, it's, it's not a crazy high number in the sense that it's not, it's not bad is what I'm saying, I guess. And then we can also just see some good metrics here, like return on the uh, equity. And it gives a little definition, but basically the profitability of the business and then capital invested and then return on the assets as well. And we can see, I mean, over the long haul, they've had a pretty good double digit for the most part growth on this, which is not surprising based off the other metrics as well. Earnings per share has also gone up very steadily, very well. I mean, since 2014, you're at $1.78, and now trailing 12 months is seven fifty three. I mean, that's a huge increase. So that's really good. I like to see all that. And, some, and then obviously, usually I'll look into their free cash flow. I'll look into their balance sheet as well. And I'm not going to bore you guys too much. And obviously, this so this is all in millions of dollars as well, I should say. So it ends up equating to billion. But um, essentially, their overall total current assets versus their total current liabilities, right? So, and then we fi they figure in everything from the uh, shares outstanding to basically longstanding liabilities as well. And come to basically total liabilities and, uh, and equity. And they come to a, a total number. And that kind of gives you an idea of, which we already kind of covered, what basically what was the debt percentage to, um, to the income. So this is no new information. This is just another sheet 
that you can kind of look and you can pause on the screen and see what the, what it is. Also, I like to look at and see the common stock. So common stock is, I like to see this one here, shares outstanding. So I like to make sure that my shares are not getting diluted into oblivion, as in if anything, they're buying back shares or not doing anything with them, but they're not, they're not diluting it by making more shares out of thin air, kind of like the government does with money. <laughs> so they started with 146 million shares because guys, this is in millions and now they're at 145.3. So they really haven't gone up and they haven't gone down from, you know, the last 10 years. I mean, they've fluctuated in between there a little bit, but nothing drastic. So that's actually very stellar. I like to see that. And their enterprise value has gone up uh, like immensely. So overall, I mean, as you can tell here, revenue for last trailing 12 months, net income, price to earnings ratio, debt coverage. And we go back historically. I mean, this is trended up at a nice, good rate. Um, so, yeah. And if you look here, community, it doesn't even have anything on Snowball on this <laughs> because it's not. Like I said, this is not a largely known one, even in the dividend community that I've heard about. I actually found it on Yahoo. It pulled up in my feed. And then I was like, hmm, never heard of that. And so I had to do my homework on it and research. And then I was like, wow. Hmm. So, you know, they do, they, they create basically all of the, a lot of the French fries and, and fry slash potato processed food market, frozen foods uh, market share. And like McDonald's uses them completely for all of their stuff. And I was like, huh, so that's not going out of style anytime soon. You have a forward P of less than 14. And historically speaking, it's at a low for their price to earnings. And they have a, a very low payout ratio of just over 14% with a five-year dividend growth of almost 12.5%. Good dividend rating. And it's more of a defensive play in the consumer staples sector. And they've been around since 1950 in their headquarters in Idaho. I mean, at that point, it's like, what's not to love? It's a U.S. based company. It's got it's trading at a lower valuation than it's high by 25 you know, percent, as we figured out. And it's got a really good dividend growth rate. And I think this one could be. It's going to see some tailwinds because of the market as a whole right now, kind of recessionary type atmosphere. But remember, this is a defensive play. So I humbly believe that we could see a lot of fluctuations up and down in between over the next you know, few years, just because I think the whole market as a whole and stock market is going to be have a bumpy ride over the next few years. And I could be wrong. But when people when things get tight money wise, people don't spend as much on certain things. But remember, this here is consumer staples, and it's it's everything potatoes. And what happens during times when things get tough, people try to cut back, but they also still spend money on fast food, like McDonald's, or even f frozen fries at the at at the um, at the grocery store. And it's funny because they're in both places. So it's like, well, the person who wants to not go to fast food anymore, they're still going to buy their products probably at the grocery store instead. So this company kind of does a little bit of all. Um, I like to look at the mode as well on a company. And <laughs> I want to say the mode is wide because they offer a lot of products, but I'm laughing because the, their moat is literally potatoes. I mean, so I guess if we had a huge potato famine, I guess they could be destroyed. But I mean, I could say the same thing about Hershey's and chocolate. And I mean, they had some issues with that. And now that's coming back down closer to earth instead of to the moon. And, you know, their business is only going to improve as well. And it's no different than Starbucks having all the issues that they're having right now just because they had a bad quarter, a bad year. Well, bad quarter, I should say, of, of earnings and probably the bad rest of the year. And um, but but people don't realize, like, you got to think long term on these kinds of things. And that's kind of what I want to end this video on is like ignore the naysayers, ignore the people that try to tell you, well, you can't do that or, well, you know, it's that um that's a bad idea or, you know, it's just bad idea to invest because you can always lose money. Well, that's BS guys. And, and honestly, you know, I would say that's completely BS because at the end of the day, you know, it's going to be completely up to you, the investor to decide 
you know, cause like this, this right here is just me giving my humble opinion. You know, I'm not a financial advisor or, or, or licensed in this at all. I just do this to try to bring some type of, um, uh, enjoyment. And I, I just enjoy helping people. So I always tell people do your own research, but I guess to get back to my rant is, you know, sometimes you got to play a contrary and play. So when things like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, among others, when things are out of style, so when it's hated, that's actually the best time to be a, a net buyer. And I just so happen to humbly believe that that is exactly the case with companies like Lamb Weston and also Starbucks, Hershey's company, Archer Daniels Midland, you know, among others. And, um, I just humbly believe in those types of, uh, companies, you know, and, uh, and then I also will mention some moves that I, uh, that I did here and that I changed as well. So a few things here that you'll notice, and I'm just not going to cover percentage wise, because I've already told you in the past, the percentages are skewed immensely. You know, it's not exact my targeted future long-term, uh, target like Schwab is not going to be this great of a percentage, et cetera. Um, more individuals are coming. I'm putting more into them, but basically some moves that I made that I changed here is I, as you guys know, I'm the, I'm still putting more money weekly into the entire portfolio, but I'm adding even slightly more into ADM because it's undervalued in my opinion right now. And, or it's, I should say they're either undervalued or at a fair, very good attractive valuation for their historical last five and 10 year historical. So ADM, I'm putting more into Starbucks. I'm putting more into Hershey's company. I'm putting more into, and I'm also, I don't know if I put mentioned this last time, but I've added BMY, Bristol Myers squid. I had them on the watch list for a while and I actually added them not too long ago. And I decided to start dollar cost averaging into them as well, adding them at the same scale. I'm adding the Hershey's and Starbucks and that. And so there's those. And then the other one that I'm adding more of now, obviously, and it's not showing here because this is not up to date. So this amount and everything has not showed my most recent weekly buys. Unfortunately, it it'll today's Friday and the buys went through today. So it's not fully up to date. So I also have this one, Lamb Weston, that is also going to be in here now as well. And then notably, I got rid of my, which is not showing here, but I liquidated my T row price. I added more with that to Kroger. I split it up to Kroger and then I put, let me think, I put Hershey's and Starbucks. I did those in even split and then I did an even split with Kroger and one other. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. It's kind of late as I'm filming this, but one other, um, I split it between these. Oh, that's right. ADM. So I split it between, I split the greater of, you know, probably 60% of that amount between ADM and uh, Kroger. So, cause it was like not a crazy amount, but it was like 700 and something dollars. And I think I did 200 into ADM, 200 into uh, Kroger. Cause it's one of my core, I, lo I love Kroger and I go there all the time to Fred Meyers. And then I did uh, the rest, which was 300 and something. So less than 50%, but and did an even split from Starbucks and Hershey's company. And none of those show on here, unfortunately, because it's not up to date, but anyways, yeah. So I'm just going to continue adding to the portfolio. I think with that, uh, removal of T row and then the addition of those, um, you know, one or two others from maybe the last original update. Uh, I, I believe I'm sitting at 23 individual holdings now, and obviously the one, you know, SCHD index fund. And then in the Roth, that's different. The Roth, I have a few more. If you want to add in, I have far less of these individual holdings. I only have DGRO, SCHD, evenly split for future money allocation. And then, um, and then the other third of the, so those are each a third. And then the last third is split between um, Google, Microsoft, Apple, and then Amphenol and MasterCard, I believe it is. 
or visa or both of those and uh, it's not an even even split i kind of split it up with what i figured was um, more long-term compounding effect growth like mastercard microsoft amphenol etc so anyways that is that in a nutshell i just wanted to bring that to your guys attention i'll probably do another video as well coming up on some of those other ones like like bmy for example because honestly i mean it's like it's trading like in the 40s right now 44 16 and i'll tell you what it's all-time high not too terribly long ago it was in the 80s it's basically like 50 percent of what it was and um it's got it rated as ver as bullish as well in fidelity but i am bullish and obviously schd fund is bullish because they added to bmy to the portfolio for schd for this upcoming year too so it'll be interesting to see where all that goes um and yeah and then i reduced my <laughs> reoccurring investments into uh mastercard is not even on there other than in the roth that i'm adding more to i think it's crazily overvalued um but i mean it's historically been but i, I think it's visa is a far better attractive value based off of the company itself too besides also pe so I'm putting more into that as a core and less on the MasterCard. Um, and I'm doing, so for the taxable account, I don't have Google in there. I just have it in the Roth. And let's see, Microsoft, Microsoft, Apple, Amphenol, and, uh, oh, what is it? One other, oh, MasterCard. Those are getting like very little weekly currently in the taxable, like hardly anything. But in the Roth, they're kind of somewhat evenly split on that 33% amount every week. So it'll be interesting to see where all those go. Long term, I'm bullish on all of them. But um, I think we have a lot of good bearish ones currently and a lot of good valuations to, to focus on. And that's where you're going to make your money too even more is if you're contrary in plays and you believe in a company. As long as you stay diversified, not diversified, but diversified. You know you're going to do well long term and so total not including the extra few holdings that i hold in the roth as well like i said i'm in the low 20s for a number of total individual holdings and then schd which holds you know roughly 100 100 different companies in it is kind of its target at 100 and i think it's just a hair over that uh, on its new allocation but anyways very impressive i love that kind of stuff i enjoy doing this i just enjoy making these videos I really honestly hope that, you know, these somehow inspire you or open your eyes to other options uh, of possibility of what you could invest in. Realizing, you know, some of these that I put out, like for example, Amphenol, I mean, it's in the 120s now. And when I was originally recommending it, it was like 70 bucks, I believe. So, I mean, like I said, this is just for education, entertainment, right? <laughs> I'm a licensed person, full disclaimer, it's in the bottom as well, but I am also a big proponent of I'm not going to ever tell you guys something that I'm not personally either invested in, deploying money into, or have deployed money into, and maybe will continue to in the future, even if it's overvalued right now. So that's kind of my humble belief and opinion. I, I don't like to to even even entertain right people down the wrong road because I just I'm highly against it. You're not going to see me making big flashy videos or 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 any of that bs because i don't believe in it i i believe that every person i like to look at every person and treat them as if I, how i want to be treated and and so this is what i'm doing it could be completely wrong in some people's eyes but uh, long term historically it's performed pretty well and um, it's growing very well and dividends are pretty amazing and creates a really good passive income stream and uh and even though this is not fully up to date right now i mean you guys can see here this is pretty inspiring when you look and you see this trend and you see where you're going to be in you know a couple decades by by just continuing to invest at a good rate and anybody can do this i don't care your position you could do five dollars a week i mean that's that's pretty low but you, you can always do something is what I'm saying. There's, there's a, a hamburger you don't need to go get. There's a Starbucks you don't need to go get. I'm just kidding. You can get the Starbucks. You're supporting the S-Bucks stock. But 
No, I'm just just kidding. Full disclaimer, though, um, I am long Starbucks. But um, no, I mean, you guys get what I mean. So just be smart about your choices. 